Hello again, Tim Spector of the Zoe Symptom Study app, giving you the weekly update. And good news is that no less than Professor Neil Ferguson has stated that he thinks it's unlikely there's going to be another big wave this year and that we're unlikely to need further lockdowns. For followers of the app, you'll know this is what we've been saying for several months now based on our own data. But it, it bodes well that there's much more of a consensus uh, that we're going to come out of this uh, pandemic uh, safely. Now, the levels remain low and they haven't changed dramatically, you will have noticed from last week. But they're at a such a low level that our confidence limits around them are fairly large. So we may well have uh, dropped another 10% and not be sure. And it highlights that when levels do get low as they did last summer, our estimates are less precise and that goes, that's true for all the surveys that just take uh, a few hundred thousand people's results and generalize them to the population. Now, the other problems we're having, and I mentioned last week, are that we're now trying to uh, extrapolate from the data you're giving us to the wider population to give these figures. And the situation has changed because now we have 60% uh, of the population vaccinated, uh, at least partially, and lots with natural immunity. And that's even higher in you, the users of the app where uh, we're approaching over 80%. So this means that we're judging what's going on on a number of uh, younger people who have been unvaccinated and the disease in vaccinated people. Uh, we're working on a fix, but in, in the meantime, uh, just look at all these exact figures with, with a bit of caution. Nevertheless, it doesn't stop the uh, clear idea that things are in a stable low state uh, exactly where we were last summer uh, and that hasn't really changed and when we look at our data compared to the official confirmed cases from the government just based on the, the solid PCR testing not not the lateral flows uh, you can see uh, that they are, are tracking pretty similarly uh, and coming to similar conclusions so that's uh, all good news so um, do also realize that because we're now getting uh, lots of cases of COVID after vaccination with several hundred after two and several thousand after one, those cases are different. And we've shown that they are actually milder. And whereas in the past, about half of people had classic symptoms in the first week, less than a third do now if they've had a vaccination. And so you're going to get less symptoms, they'll be less severe, it won't be classical. So do keep an open mind and do get a test when we ask you to. That way we'll keep a, a close eye on it and make sure that even if mild, uh, you're uh, not going to pass it on to other people. So um, th the importance of our survey is getting even greater because as the disease is shifting, uh, the fact that we haven't relied on those three symptoms like uh, the official government ones allows us much more breadth to find out what's really going on and whether not only the new variants might be causing different symptoms, but also the new variants combined with uh, the different vaccines. So keep logging in and keep helping us there. Um, particularly now we move into this endemic phase. Now. We've estimated the likelihood of uh, you getting infected in the next 24 hours, which is not the same as um, bumping into someone uh, with COVID, but it, it relates to you and it's based on the incidence figures. And some of the other figures you heard about are based on prevalence, which is uh, how many people at any one time are gonna have the virus. So your chance of having it tomorrow are pretty low. There are about one in 47,000 if you're still waiting for a vaccination, uh, one in 90 
8,000 if you've had one jab and uh, less than about one in 170,000 if you've had the two vaccinations. That's going to vary about three or four fold depending on whether in the south of England where rates are low or uh, in other parts of the country, particularly uh, the north where they're a little bit higher. But generally it's all relative. Uh, they're all pretty low. And again, uh, to put this into context, uh, we're still uh, amongst the lowest rates per million in Europe. And when you look at those other countries, some of these ones with rates that are three or four times higher than ours have opened up already or are going at the same speed as us. So relative to those other countries, our government is being uh, pretty cautious. So this bodes well for really not having any major mishaps when we do um, fully unlock uh, in, in, in a few weeks time. Now, um, thanks to your data after vaccination, we're picking up some interesting findings. And as well as you can see from our vaccine report, all these different uh, vaccines having slightly different uh, types of side effects and pain in the arm, etc. Uh, a few of you have been reporting uh, changes to the menstrual cycle, your periods. And this has been from experiencing uh, heavy periods or an unexpected uh, bit, a period in the middle of your cycle, or uh, in a few cases, uh, an unexpected period after the menopause. At the moment, there's just a few hundred of these, which given that uh, we have over about 600,000 women who have been reporting uh, is a small number but uh, we're taking it seriously and we're going to start asking more questions formally uh, in the report. Until we get that sorted, please do note down in the other column of other symptoms if this has happened to you uh, as we want to make a note of it and see if it's real or just a statistical uh, quirk. Finally, um, just want to say uh, that it's great working with you so well. So many of you stayed with us on the app as we change all these phases uh, into the endemic and your, your data is as valuable now as it's ever been. So keep logging, keep all those symptoms coming and stay safe. Thank you for your support.